not good. There's a lot of damage. Most all the weight from what I can tell sitting on the tire. Rip the plate off the front of the feeder house as it flexes back and forth as the side hill. Go over there and check it out. Right now they're emptying out a gravity box so we can get up here and get it under the unload tube. If it will still run, Scott shut it off real fast, hoping it'll be able to still make oil pressure and everything. It's not a crazy angle, but and the unload tube is going to be about pointing straight up in the sky. But we're hoping we can get that weight out of there and be able to pick it up with the excavator and try to wiggle it down out of here. damage starts getting bad. You can see the axle broke right in there where it pivots for the side hill. So the whole cylinder is, is pulled apart as well. I can show you on the other side what it actually looks like. Then this is all crushed. The radiator just got put in this season brand new, but the least of its worries at this point. Feeder house, it's all been pretty well ripped apart. At the same time though, I don't know if it's as bad as I originally thought. It's still, it's just out of the roller actually. I don't know if that's destroyed. It may not be as terrible as I originally thought. But the recovery is gonna be hard to do. There's no good lifting points on the whole machine. And of course there's that concern of it continuing to go over. I think we want to lift it up and try to crib on the other side underneath there. Let the back axle help. But you can see how far over it is, of course. Oh yeah, this is the side I was thinking of. So yeah, it did, it ripped the, that plate off the front of the feeder pretty bad. It's still hooked up to the head. But you can see what that cylinder actually looks like. And it broke right where this swivels. That's where it snapped. I don't think we're still under warranty, unfortunately. To add to all the fun, it's currently 18 degrees out. Maybe it's up to 20 by now, but it is cold. Luckily, the 240 started relatively easily. Got the 4955 running to bring that gravity box up here and see what we can make happen. Gonna go ahead out tear out some of that fence below it because it's going to be in the way. I'm sure of that. And we will have a clear shot back here to the shop anyway. Stepping her up a big hole here. Got some fence torn out. Scott's playing Russian roulette, checking out the damage. have oil pressure. It does. On that much of a lean. Here we are. Yeah, look, it's more convenient that way. Trying to take some shielding out of the way that we can put a chain from the bucket all the way down to the 
leveling cylinder bracket looks to be the only strong point to lift by and not destroy everything in the process. A good try to pick her? Sounded like you were tugging on her pretty good when I was walking up there. Well, we just started and then I thought about what's stopping it from rolling. I'm pulling on it a little bit. I don't know, I didn't pull very hard yet. My dad's grabbing some more crib blocks, so once we pick it up, we can set it on those. I think we're gonna have a lot of the weight of the front part of the machine while it's on such an angle. So this is our first try at trying to pick the combine. And as you can see, the 240 is just not quite having it. We were a little too far away and it was a big task. The way the combine is rolled down into its right hand side, the 240 is lifting most of the weight of the machine, I would say at this point. Until it gets rolled up and over, it's picking the majority of the 6620. So I was trying to curl the bucket rock it a little bit here and there and really they just it just didn't quite have enough oomph to make it happen and did get it picked up just enough off the tire that scott and codge thought they would go ahead and remove this panel with the rotary fan on it and get that out of the way so we didn't cause it any more damage or the cooling pack behind it any more damage Now we've lost the bucket, saving potentially a couple thousand pounds there of picking capacity. It's the 240 was still struggling to make this pick, especially from this far out being in front of the header. It was basically able to hold the weight and then use the bucket curl to lift it. But it could not just boom up and lift it straight up. So by holding tension on it and curling the bucket out, I was able to get the machine up off the ground and at this point the snouts of the header were starting to come into the track so Scott and Codge were folding up the snouts so that they wouldn't hit the track anymore. Now the snouts are out of the way so went ahead and tried to pick it a little more. The chain was getting into the turbo pretty hard so I was able to stick in here and keep the, trying to keep the chain away from the turbo was kind of the challenge the whole time. Now Scott's working on clearing out a little spot here to get a crib block in underneath the frame. The header could not be removed because it was under so much strain from the twist of the combine. So by getting a crib block under here and setting the machine back down, as long as it wasn't quite as angled as it was, our game plan was to get the header unhooked and get it out of the way. Yeah, it's just pushing that in the ground. So we got the combine picked up sitting on a crib block. We also were able to drain the cylinder on the opposite side, which kind of lowered it down. Got it more level. We were able to pull the pins on the feeder house to unhook the header, unhook the drive shafts, all that jazz now. It's not such an extreme angle. And now these guys are rigging up the head so we can pick it up and just gonna bring the cart up here, hoping we can pick it up with this excavator and set it on the cart. Oh boy. 
and she's off. And she's on the header cart. Sorry, I don't have enough hands to film and do all this stuff at one time, but I'll try to do as best filming as I can. Oh, oh, don't, no further, it's gonna roll off, right? No? I'm amazed. <laughs> I think you need a new drive shaft. <laughs> Got her held up in the air now. They're cribbing it. You can see where that chain runs down to that cylinder mount. It's where we're picking from. Or we didn't feel that the engine mount would be strong enough, but at this point, I gotta say, it's not nearly as bad as I thought it'd be. I think my dad's trying to give a lecture support. She does come down. Not quite. Almost. Almost. You want me to set it there? Redoing our crib, crib blocks. Oh. Just afraid he's gonna squash it into the ground a little bit more. See if she'll take the weight. Beautifully. Why don't I just stay on a little bit? No reason not to. At this point, yeah, the hydraulic cooler, you can see it bent. Those lines are bent a little bit, but it did not pierce it no oil came out no radiate no coolant came out so seems like the radiator may have lived scott's going to try to start it again and hopefully there's oil pressure now because it didn't seem like it he got scared shut it off pretty quick i think it should have had oil pressure before when he tried it If it has oil pressure, we're thinking we can just kind of carry it like this and limp it down to the shop. Try and check the oil where we're at now. Clean up these extra crib blocks. He's holding the fuel kill, trying to check for oil pressure. I don't know how it wouldn't have oil pressure at this point. It's perfectly level.
I try to pull the box or let him move it? You might need to straighten out a little bit, Scott. Yes. Well, it all made it back now, mainly thanks to 240. And there's the tire axle drive hub, 
You can take a look at that. Basically, I feel that everything ended up very lucky. A, it happened right there. Not the fields over there or over there or above those train tracks. Happened about as close to the shop as it could have. So this is what it's supposed to look like. And on the other side, this piece back here, it snapped off basically right here. So it comes all the way out into this final drive housing. This is pivoting on it. This is the hydraulic cylinder here that does the auto leveling. You can see the rod where it goes there. So that, and this is all the way down right now. There's a bleeder screw we let off to drop this side to try to help our cause in the field. But basically this would be halfway and the other side would be halfway. And then as you're on a hill, there's a little box that just has the old style had mercury which is i think now it's updated to an accelerometer but basically it's just fighting with the one valve lets oil out of the one cylinder into the other and that's what makes the machine level so the machine itself will stay level on a pretty good grade but the header is following the contour of the ground excuse me so this piece looks to be okay on the other side it's just the piece inside of it but you got to pull the wheel and tire pull this cover get in there and there's a chain drive between here and up to the actual final drive as a chain runs in this case so that cover is going to have to come off and undo all that get the broken piece out and just make sure that this housing is okay as it seems to be here you can see on this side this piece just shattered and i don't know it's kind of hard to tell when you're looking at it but i'm sure it didn't happen all at one time it's not like he hit a big bump when this happened or anything. He was just turning downhill. He was going over to the dump truck to unload when she let go. And I feel he's lucky it didn't go over. Pretty much got all the way until the tire was jammed up into the subframe underneath the radiator. You can see the damage to these doors. And this guy got it. This guy's bent back. That shield down there is fine. And this shield here, it got walloped. It's all curved in under here. You can see it in the other video. We took that off when we started lifting and everything, basically to try to save it from getting worse. But the hydraulic cooler got damaged a little, but it's not leaking. You can see like this hose is now bent up, but again, nothing's really that bad. Those guys just put a brand new radiator in it like a month or two ago. So, fortunately that has seemed to survive no real damage up there as far as that goes nothing was leaking other than the oil that came out of this leveling cylinder the rod snapped off on that leveling cylinder you can see at that angle when all this obviously let go so that cylinder needs to be rebuilt that piece you need that and then the final drive and everything looks like it's okay. So all in all, it's not too bad. Up here on the feeder house, obviously this piece got ripped out of there, which bent its main swivel pin. Kind of hard to see on camera, but it, it got bent pretty badly. So this piece needs to be replaced with a junkyard unit or something. You can kind of see the issue of that pin there. But that pin is welded to the feeder house here. And then the back side here. So I'm guessing we'll probably just burn that pin out of there and machine a new one to weld in. I don't think that's anything too crazy. The feeder itself, I don't think it's bad. You can see there's those rollers on that plate they're running here and that's for the auto level so the head tilts on the feeder house because the head stays to the contour of the ground while the machine stays level so this is the aftermath on the final drive and the final housing as i say it it looks like it's okay obviously the input drive shaft is deleted i'm gonna need one of those but then down here you see the piece that's inside that swivels that's what's broken, obviously. To get it out the rest of the way out, we'll have to take wheel and tire off, take that cover off, and undo all that and inspect that final drive housing. But everything there seems to be okay. 
where the machine laid down on this tire was right on the sidewall here you can see a little nick and it kind of walked its way there as it was running and you can see basically you got this scrape in the green paint right off that side shield so scott said it didn't really fall hard or fast it was kind of slow and i think that's because that tire kind of walked its way out to where you saw it laying so it the machine just kind of tipped down per se so as you can see guys we got everything taken care of uh really was kind of a fun recovery all in all i'm happy with how everything turned out we didn't cause any more damage to the machine a little bit up by the engine a couple wires died but that, that's minor details but all in all at first when i saw this thing i was like wow that is not good there is a whole lot of damage the whole side of the machine the radiator cooling pack everything is dead and the feeder house is destroyed and everything and i was figuring honestly that it was a total loss possibly insurance situation but as it turned out it's looking to be very fixable it's probably going to take a few trips to some different junkyards out west with some similar machines some of the stuff is very common like that tin piece there that's common to any of the 66 77 88 20 titan twos Obviously, these side hill parts down here are a little harder to find. I would feel better buying brand new there than buying used because obviously if this one was fatigued and broke, that could be any of them. And it makes me think, why not change the other side while you're at it? But it was a fun process. A good Sunday afternoon mission. Uh, thanks for joining along.